that the spiritual purification workshop is a workshop that focuses on enhancing the level of sincerity and humbleness. And last time, if you remember, we had the homework, and the homework was to sit and eat and even cook for less fortunate people or maybe poor people. So I wish that you did this homework. Actually, Ramadan was a chance for many of us to humble themselves and to uh, do this. So I won't be following the homework this time with you, and I will go directly into the topic because it's a very long one today. At-ta'arruf ala Allah, knowing Allah. The, re the first reason of why this is the topic of our session is that the more you know Allah, the better servant of Allah you become. The more you know Allah, the more the servitude, the more the ubudiyah. Because the more you know Allah, the more your heart will submit to Allah. The more you know Allah, the more you humble yourself to Allah. Because actually, when you know Allah, you also realize how much you need Him. You, re you realize your weakness. You realize your need for Allah. You realize how helpless you are. So number one, we need to know Allah in order to become better servants for Allah. To feel more ubudiyah, servitude. The second reason is, you remember we spoke about al-madh, praise. And we said al-madh, khamrun nafs. Praise is the wine of the ego, the wine of oneself. People love to be praised. So when you, be, when you are praised, your ego inflattens and it grows and it becomes an idol. And we spoke about how can we stop people from praising us and how we should not seek the praise from people. But what will substitute the pleasure in our nafs? Because there is... It's, it's actually, there's a lot of pleasure in being praised. Now, I'm not going to be praised. What will substitute the pleasure of the nafs? It is the pleasure of being fi ma'iyyatillah, or being in the company of Allah. And this will not happen except when you know Allah, because the more you know Allah, you mo the more you feel in his company. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Inna lillahi tis'atun wa tis'ina isma, mi'atun illa wahida, man ahsaha dakhala al-jannah. Allah has 99 names. The one who knows them will enter paradise. And many people don't understand this hadith. They think that Allah has 99 names, so let's memorize them. But if it was that simple, then any atheist who memorizes them will go to Jannah. It's not as simple as that. Allah has so many names, much more than 99. Allah has at much more than 300 names. And the hadith of the Prophet says that there are 99 names for Allah, the one who which means who records them or who understands them and live by their meanings. They will affect your personality. We'll go to Jannah. Which names are those? They are not the 99 that are mentioned in the Hadith. Because the Prophet just said this. And then the narrator of the Hadith continued out of his own ijtihad. And he mentioned 99 names that he thought about, but not necessarily they are those names. Not necessarily. Not one of them is Al-Jamil. 
And one of the names of Allah is Al Jamil, the beautiful, by the way. Not one of them is Ar Rabb, the Lord. And one of the names of Allah is Ar Rabb, the Lord. Because the Prophet just left it open. This means that what you need to do is to look for every name of Allah and understand it and try to live by its meanings and be affected by them. Among those names of Allah, there are 99 that if it affects you, you will go to Jannah. Which names are these? We don't know them. Just look for every name of Allah. Ash-Shafi, the curer, is not one of them. That is mentioned by the narrator of the hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ by the mercy of God, you, Prophet, were gentle in your dealings with them. This means what? This means that by connecting to the name Ar-Rahim, by connecting to the name Ar-Rahim, the Prophet's personality was affected and he became Rahim. And he had Rahma, he had mercy. So the name the merciful affected the Prophet وسلم, and he became merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْبُنْكَرِ وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرِ The verse means, keep up the prayer. Prayer restrains outrageous and unacceptable behavior. God's mentioning is greater. What does that mean? Keep up the prayer. Your prayers are the mentioning of Allah. You do dhikrullah by, this, by these prayers. And they affect you. But the word dhikrullah akbar, it means that when God mentions you, this is greater than you mentioning Allah. So when you mention Allah, Allah mentions you. Can you imagine this? You mention Allah among beautiful people like those people, your brothers and sisters in the mosque. Allah mentions you to Jibreel and Israfil and Mikael, to the angels, subhanAllah. So, wala dhikrullahi akbar. You are here in the house of Allah. Now, we are now in the house of Allah. This means what? It means that we are now the guests of Allah. This is the house of Allah. So, we are the guests of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Beauty fil ard al masajid. My houses on earth are the masajid, the mosques. وَإِنَّ زُوَارُهَا هُمْ عُمَّارُهَا And the people who come to the mosques are the guests. فَطُوبَى لِعَبْدٍ تَطَهَّرَ فِي بَيْتِهِ Give good news to a servant who gets, who washes at home. It's the sunnah is to make wudu at home, by the way, not in the mosque. The sunnah that you come to the mosque in wudu. And then visits me, ثم زارني, وحق على المزور أن يكرم الزائر. And it is the right, and it is the duty of the, Allah is saying so. It is the duty of the host to be generous to the guest. So Allah is telling you, you are His guests. This affects us. Affects us positively. Because Allah will give us. Give us what? He is the merciful. We become merciful. He gives us from his mercy. When you keep coming to the mosque, mentioning Allah, you become a better person. You become more merciful to others. Allah is a salam. Allah is the, the source of peace. So you become having peace inside. If you want water, you have to come closer to the source of water in order to take water and even give others water. Allah is the source of peace. You have to come closer to the source of peace 
in order to have peace and to offer peace. Same goes with mercy. Same goes with forgiveness. Same goes with all this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءَ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَا خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا And he gives wisdom to whoever he will. Which means that the one who connects with the name of Allah, the all-wise, Al-Hakim, will receive wisdom. So you need to connect with the names of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about his names, about how important those names are. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدُعُوهُ بِهَا Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf, the most excellent names belong to Allah. Use them to call on Him. So you need to use the names of Allah to call on Allah. And use the name which is suitable to what you are asking. So you're asking strength. Use the name Al-Qawi. You're asking knowledge. Use the name the knower of all. Al-Alim. And it's so important to use those names when you make dua. The problem is, I know some people who don't make dua. Rarely when they do dua. And this is a catastrophe. They say, whatever will happen will just happen. No, that's not the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ مَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا دُعَاءُكُمْ What are you to my Lord without your supplication? Allah said so in the Quran to Prophet Muhammad to tell us, قُلْ I said before, the word قُلْ means say. Every قُلْ in the Quran means say, O oh Muhammad. Tell them Muhammad. So every time you see the word قُلْ, there's a message from Allah to you through Prophet Muhammad. قُلْ, say, Prophet, say. What are you to my Lord without your supplication? So we are nothing without our supplication. Allah will not look at us without our supplication. The verse in Surah Ghafir is a very important one. It says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Your Lord says, Call on me and I will answer you. Those who are too proud to worship me will enter hell humiliated. So Allah says in the beginning of the verse, Call on me, which means supplicate, do dua. And then he is warning those who are too arrogant from the worship. So, ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. Here comes the hadith of Prophet Muhammad. Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah, which means supplication is the worship. So here when Allah says, those who are too proud or too arrogant to worship, it means those who are too arrogant to make du'a. And the hadith of the Prophet says, ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. Du'a is the worship. Dua or supplication is the worship which is meant here in this uh, verse. There's also another hadith of Prophet Muhammad that says, Ad-du'a mukhul ibadah, which means dua, supplication, is the bone marrow of the worship. So you have the bones and inside the bones there is the bone marrow. The bone marrow of the acts of worship is the dua. Why is it so important to make dua? Brothers and sisters, you do not ask someone who doesn't exist. So asking someone is an acknowledgement of his existence. So doing dua in itself is ibadah because it is an acknowledgement of the existence of Allah. And the more consistency in your dua and the more you insist in your dua, the more you prove your belief in the existence and the ability of Allah to do everything. So dua in itself is ibadah. The best example for this is Zechariah, Prophet Zechariah, Sayyidina Zechariah, alayhi salam. What did he do? 
in Surah Maryam, <coughs> it starts with an amazing story about Prophet Zechariah. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيًّا وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي وَكَانَتِ امْرَأَتِي عَاقِرًا فَهَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّ It means, this is an account of your Lord's grace towards his servant Zachariah. When he called to his Lord secretly, he's doing dua secretly, what is he saying to his Lord? Lord, my bones have weakened and my hair is ashen gray but never lord have have i ever prayed to you in vain i fear what my kinsmen will do when i'm gone for my wife is barren so he has a barren wife and he is a very old man and then he's asking what so grant me a successor a gift from you he's asking a boy his wife is barren and he's a very old man, and he's asking a child. And then Allah responded to him, Ya Zakariya, inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin ismuhu Yahya, lam naj'al lahu min qablu samiyya, qala rabbi anna yakunu li ghulamu wa khadinati wa kanati imraati aakhiran, wa khad balagtu min al-kibari itiyya. Zakariya, we bring you good news of a son, thou the angels are telling him. Zachariah, we bring you good news of a son whose name will be John. We have chosen this name for no one before him. Yahya, John. No one was named John before. No one was named Yahya before. Zachariah said, Lord, how can I have a son when my wife is barren and I'm old and frail? Subhanallah. He was just making dua that he gets a child. Even though his wife is barren and he's old, and now he's receiving the response for his dua, and he is surprised. Why is he surprised? Zachariah was doing the dua as an act of worship. Whether Allah gives him the child or not, he is, he is asking someone great, so he is asking something great. And his belief in Allah will not be shaken whether Allah responds to his dua in this life or in the hereafter. So doing dua in itself is in an act of worship. And today I want to talk to you about three names that are so important for the topic of our workshop, the spiritual purification, to purify your spirit the first one is because those three names will affect your ego, will help you destroy your ego before it destroys you. The first one is you need to know Allah al ghani al Hamid, the self sufficient, the worthy of all praise. Al ghani, the self sufficient. The second one is Al-Qayyum, the ever watchful. And the third name is Al-Mun'im, the giver. And the names of Allah, you can contemplate upon them in the two Qur'ans. Al-Qur'an Al-Mastur, the Qur'an which is written in the words, in the text, in the lines. Quran al and the Quran which you see in the nature. Because the Quran that we read is what it, we read it in lines. It is also the same one is there in the nature. When you look around you, that's why you need a lot to look around you and to try to connect what you read in the Quran with what you see in the nature. Self-sufficient, worthy of all praise, al ghani al-Hamid. One of the forms of ignorance about Allah is when one of us looks at his acts of worship highly and appreciates so much that he fasted Ramadan 
and you appreciate so much that you pray in the mosque every day. Uh, this is and this this in itself is one of the forms of ignorance. Why? Because here you think that by your prayers and your da'wah and your jihad and your what al-munkar and all those acts of worship, you think that you are doing a favor for Islam or for Allah. That's an that's a a form of ignorance. Why? Because Allah is self-sufficient. So he doesn't need your prayers. He doesn't need your fasting. He doesn't need it. Who needs it? You. Not him. Islam doesn't need it. You need it. So don't think that you're doing any favor to anyone. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ibrahim, In takfuru antum وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Even if you together with everybody else on earth are thankless and disbelievers, God is self-sufficient, worthy of all praise. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need our prayers. He doesn't need our fasting. He doesn't need any act of worship that we do. We need it, not Him. So don't be... Don't appreciate so much your acts of worship. And this fact should be strongly established inside in every one of us that Allah does not need us nor our acts of worship. Self-sufficient. Al-Ghani. Al-Ghani. Self-sufficient. He said in a hadith Qudsi, Ya ibadi, innakum lan tablughu durri fatadurruni wa lan tablughu naf'i fatanfa'uni my servants, you can neither harm me nor benefit me. Ya ibadi, law anna awalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum kanu ala atqa qalbi rajulin wahidin minkum ma zada dhalika fi mulki shay'a. My servants, among humans and jinn, if all of you from the first one to the last one were as righteous as the most righteous one of you, this will not add anything to my authority. Same. And if all of you from the first one to the last one were as evil as the most evil among you, this will not decrease anything from my authority. He is not affected. Allah says in Surah Al-Ankabut, those who exert themselves do so for their own benefit. God does not need his creatures. Verse number six in Surah Al-Ankabut. These verses are very important because they show you, they tell you about this uh, attribute and this name of God. So when you read the Quran, you need to focus on these attributes. Today's homework will be to read the Quran focusing on these names. Not when the name comes, but when the description itself describes the name itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Muhammad, Ha antum tudawna li tunfiku fi sabilillahi, faminkum may yabhal, wa may yabhalu fa inna may yabhalu an nafsi, wallahu al ghani wa antum al fukara. Though now you are called upon to give a little for the sake of God, some of you are grudging, which means acting miserly. Whoever is grudging is so only towards himself. God is the source of wealth and you are the needy ones. I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine, you know that it is very rewardable to go in the day of Jumu'ah, very early before Jumu'ah. Right? Very rewardable. I want you to imagine that next Friday you wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning and you come to the mosque at 8 thinking that you will be the first one to enter the mosque. And then when you enter the mosque, you find that the mosque is full of people. What will you feel? Shocked. You will feel that <laughs> you won't actually feel proud of yourself at all. You will feel like then coming at eight is not a big deal. Others did it. Many others did much better than me. This should be your feeling. When you read in the Quran, 
that everything around you worships God. Everything around you is doing tasbih. Doing tasbih and hamd and praising Allah continuously and tirelessly. This makes you feel what? Even whatever I do, I will, not, I will never be among the pioneers. Yeah. You're not a pioneer in your tasbih or your salah. So take it easy. Don't think that you are doing a favor for Allah. You need it. You need it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, the seven heavens and the earth and everyone in them glorify him. There is not a single thing that does not celebrate his praise. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِن لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Everything makes tasbih except that you don't understand how they do it. I told you before, when I used to take my kids and go to the lake and see the ducks swimming in a V shape like that, I used to tell myself, maybe this is a jama'ah namaz that they are doing. And this duck in the front is the imam duck. Maybe they do it V, we do it in straight lines. I don't know. I'm not saying that this is the jama'ah, but I'm saying everything around you knows. This also a verse in the Quran. Everything knows how to pray and how to worship, which means you don't know how they do it. The birds keep on twittering very loudly in the very early morning and exactly at sunset. Why? Maybe they have two times for prayers that like we have five. We don't know. Everything around you worships and you worship. We live in a worshiping universe and we worship. This makes you feel like you are in harmony with the universe. We're not competing with the nature. We are in harmony with the nature. People here want to live in a green planet. They take care of the nature. They care a lot about the environment. Why? Because they are egocentric, they think about themselves, they want to avoid cancer. But we care about the nature because the nature is Muslim, like us. We care about the environment because the environment is a worshipping environment, like us. This is the difference. One of the ulama says, every time I hear the thunder, or I hear the flowing water, or I hear any animal or any bird, I just remember the verse that says, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِن لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Everything around you knows how to worship, but you don't understand how they do that. All the, the sounds you listen to in the nature are somehow acts of worship and hymns. And when you think that you did a lot of tasbih, alhamdulillah, I did a lot of tasbih today. A lot of saying alhamdulillah, a lot of saying astaghfirullah, a lot of that. You find the Quran telling you in the first verse of Surah Al-Jum'ah, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Everything in the heavens and earth glorifies God, the controller, the holy one, the almighty, the wise, which means even if you didn't do tasbih today, this could have never affected anything. Telling you, don't be proud of yourself. فَإِنِ اسْتَكْبَرُوا فَالَّذِينَ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ يُسَبِّحُونَ لَهُ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَهُمْ لَا يَسْأَمُونَ Those who are with your Lord, glorify Him tirelessly, night and day. Tirelessly, night and day. So, the word Al-Qayyum, or the name Al-Qayyum, this word was mentioned in the Quran always with another name, which is Al-Hayy, Al-Hayy Al-Qayyum. Al-Hayy means the ever-living. Al-Qayyum means the ever-watchful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم. God, there is no God but Him, the ever living, the ever watchful. وعنت الوجوه للحي القيوم. In Surah Taha. 
and all faces will be humbled before the ever living, the ever watchful, or the watchful one. What does it mean? The word qayyum, it is driven from the word qayyim. Qayyim in the Arabic language means the manager. Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah. His father is not called Qayyim al Jawziyyah. It, it is the profession of his father. Qayyim al Jawziyyah is a city. And his father was Qayyim al Jawziyyah, which means the mayor of al Jawziyyah. So he was called the son of the mayor of al Jawziyyah. We say Ibn al Qayyim, which means the son of the mayor. So the word Qayyim means someone who manages. So Allah is Qayyum. Qayyum, sigat mubalagha, or an ex to emphasize in the Arabic language, to put emphasis on something you exaggerate. So this form of exaggeration in the Arabic language means that Allah manages and maintains everything wisely. He's taking care of everything. Qayyum. Taking care of everything. Manages everything wisely. Everything from the beginning to the end. From the first one to the last one. For example, your liver. Your liver, there is a lot of uh, chemical operations that happen in your liver and it purifies your body from toxics. If these, of course, Al-Qayyum is the one who makes your liver purify your body. While some livers fail, when Allah stops, <coughs> no, uh, not here, Jazakallah khair. No, no, we'll be distracting for people here, Jazakallah khair. Same thing for, for example, your eye. You have the sight system. This system of your sight is managed by Al-Qayyum. The Qayyum takes care of your sight and it makes you view things. Some other people's sights fail. وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَا كُلٌّ فِي كِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ This verse doesn't mention the word Al-Qayyum. It doesn't mention the name Al-Qayyum. But it means this. That's why your homework today is to read the Quran and select for me the verses that talk about Al-Qayyum, even if it's not mentioned. The verse says, There is not a creature that moves on earth whose provision is not his concern. He knows where it lives and its final resting place. It is all there in a clear record. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qayyum, which means also he is independent and perfect. So his hearing and seeing and his abilities never weakens. So he is qayyum, he manages us. And everything at the same time, he is self-depending. Self he, he is independent on anyone. He doesn't need. He is the all-hearing, all-seeing. And his hearing and seeing are on the same level. Perfect. Will never weaken. Will never fail. Al-Qayyum is the one who gives life. He gives life and he gives gifts of seeing and hearing and wealth and everything. So when you understand this, you never say, I have. Say, Allah give me. When you understand it, when you digest it, these are the names of Allah that the Prophet spoke about. When you understand it, when you live by its meanings, you will never say, I have. You will always say, Allah give me this. How many sons do you have? Allah gave me two. See, this will affect you. If you really believe in it, th this is the way that you will be speaking later on. 
Because you know that without him, you are worthless. I, who said I before? Iblis. Ana khayrun minhu. I am better than him. So what happened? Khalas. He was cursed. He said, I. Fir'aun. He said, Alayhi li mulku misr. Isn't it that I have the authority on Egypt? He drowned. Who else? Qarun. Qarun said, Qala innama utituhu ala ilmin indi. I have it because I have knowledge. I. He was destroyed. The people of Bilqis, <coughs> the queen of Sheba, they said, Nahnu ulu quwwatin wa ulu ba'sin shadeed. We are people who have strength and we have might and so they perished. All those who said I perished. Allah Azza wa Jalla is the Qayyum. He gives us the strength to even laugh, cry, everything that we do. He is the one who is allowing us to do, giving us, providing for us to do. It is he who makes people laugh and weep in Surah Al-Najm. Not you. You can really do nothing without him allowing you to do. You want to sleep, but you can't. Sometimes you want to stay awake, but you can't. It is him who makes you fall asleep. It is him who keeps you awake. SubhanAllah. We are weak. People are weak. The human is weak and he's arrogant. We are arrogant. While actually we are so weak. Even this name, Al Qayyum, affects our Iman. Even the guidance comes from Him. Even our Iman comes from Him. You remember last time when I told you Musa, Prophet Musa, Moses said, Oh Allah, how can I? Thank you if the message is given to me by you. My striving is what you make me do. My da'wah is what you make me do. My prayers is what you make me do. How can I thank you? So he received the message, now you thanked me. When you realized that everything is from me, now you thanked me think that something comes from you personally, now you are not thankful. Even Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jurat, وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانَ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِصِيَانَ Even our acts of worship, brothers, our guidance come from Allah. The verse says, God has endeared faith to you. He's the one who made faith, Iman, dear to you and made it beautiful in your hearts he has made this belief mischief and disobedience hateful to you so he is the one who makes us love iman who makes us see iman as something beautiful who makes us hate disobedience and hate mischief subhanallah even the guidance come from him <coughs> so this means that in this life, we need Allah all the time. If Allah stops his provision to us, is the name Al-Qayyum is not acting with us, it's like you are unplugged. So you are like patients in the IC unit that are on a, an artificial inhalator. You know the artificial inhalator? When someone's lungs fail, they put him on artificial lungs, artificial inhalator. And this artificial inhalator works with electricity. See how much this patient needs electricity. So much. If electricity fails for a second, he's dead. That's us. 
if the madad from Allah, if the reinforcement that comes from Allah stops at any time, we're dead. ما يفتح الله للناس من رحمة فلا ممسك لها. No one can withhold the blessing of God open when He opens up for people. وما يمسك فلا مرسل له من بعده. Nor can anyone but Him release whatever He withholds. So if Allah withholds, no one can release. If Allah gives, no one can deprive. No one. No one. I know someone in a jail in Egypt. And the authorities brought him and they said, we can release you if you just sign this and you say we support the regime and stuff like that. He said, you can release me? This is if you brought me here to jail. You did not bring me to jail. The issue is, I have rizq here in this jail. Some water and some bread and some air to breathe. As soon as I exhaust them in jail, no force in the world can keep me here for a second. You did not bring me. It's just you are acquiring wizr. You are just acquiring bad deeds and bad points in your credit. That's it. No one can do that. So this is the issue. You, when you believe that Allah is the one who does everything, you're the strongest. That's why this means that every gift we enjoy reflects the existence of a continuous provision from Allah who maintains this gift for us. So, if, for example, if you enjoy health, this means that there is a continuous blessing from Allah to you to keep you healthy. When this provision stops, the gift will stop working. And nothing in this world works by itself without the reinforcement from Allah. Everything receives reinforcement from Allah. Every gift which one of us enjoys while another one doesn't enjoy means that Allah gave you extra provision than this one. To test to whatever, doesn't, it's not our issue now. It's everything comes to you from Allah. Yusuf, Prophet Yusuf, could have never been established without the help of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, وَكَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَتَبَوَّأُ مِنْهَا حَيْثُ يَشَاءُ it, in, in, in this way, we established power to Joseph in that land to live wherever he wished. So Allah is the one who established power for Joseph. And, of course, if you think like that and you believe like that, you will continuously sense your need to Allah in all your life aspects and you will always be mentioning Him, mentioning Allah. Because this will be the fruit of the yaqeen, of your conviction in Allah. That you continuously rely on Him, continuously depend on Him, continuously put your trust in Him. Yani when, when Moses and his people were running and then they saw the sea, they looked around, uh, uh, behind them, they saw Pharaoh coming with his army. The Jews said what? Inna la mudrakun. They were caught. They caught us. Moses did not wait for the wahi. He, he automatically said, no way I have my Lord with me and he will guide me to something. This is yaqeen. And then he received the wahi to throw his stick into the water. But without the revelation, without wahi, he has a lot of trust in Allah. That you cannot succeed without Allah's help. So you always put your trust in him and always turn to him. Allah subhanahu wa here the, the, the Prophet said, وَمَا تَوْفِيقِي إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبٌ I cannot succeed without God's help. On him I trust, in him I trust, and I always turn to him. So this is so important that you try to find 
the qayyumiyyah of Allah. How Allah is ever watchful from the Quran this week by reading the Quran trying to find that. He is qayyum. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, for example, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِّنْ طِينٍ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ We created man from an essence of clay. Who did that? Allah. He's the one who created us from an essence of clay. Then we placed him as a drop of fluid in a safe place. Who did that? Allah. Then we made that drop into a clinging form. Who did that? Allah. And we made that form into a lump of flesh. Who did that? Allah. So this is very important that when you read like that, you, you keep asking yourself, Allah did that to me, Allah did that. He's Qayyum. When he created you, he created you with his Qayyumiyyah. All the way in Surah Al-Mu'minun, you find the Qayyumiyyah there. We sent water down from the sky in due measure and lodged it in the earth. We have the power to take it all away if we so wish, and so on. So when you read, you need to understand and reflect upon the meanings. He's the one who gives us to drink. It means, And we bring down water from the sky, which we give you to drink. When I give him to drink like that, okay, I am doing. I'm. 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 I am doing as ana asqi. Allah says fa Allah says I am giving you to drink. You feel helpless, like a baby, like someone paralyzed, and they have to give him to drink in his mouth. Subhanallah. Like someone is, like Allah is putting the water in our mouth, yeah. He's bringing everything to us. So, this is so important. To get to know the Qayyumiyyah of Allah from the Quran and from al kawn the universe, and the laws of physics mentioned in the Quran. Buoyancy, buoyancy. Okay, the law of buoyancy, the law of gravity, the sound, uh, the, the speed of light, the speed of sound. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks a lot, a lot about buoyancy. Here, Allah الذي سخر لكم البحر لتجري الفلك فيه بأمره ولتبتغوا من فضله ولعلكم تشكرون. It is God who subjected the sea for you. Ships sail on it by his command. Allah talks a lot about ships sailing in the sea. See how huge they are. They weigh, they weigh tons, hundreds of tons, thousands of tons, and they float on the water. With what? With the qayyumiyyah of Allah. The buoyancy law. Laws of physics. He created them with his qayyumiyyah for us to enjoy these blessings. We need to know Allah al-mun'im, the giver. And if you know the goal from knowing the, the name, the giver, Al-Mun'im, it will make you see that you don't have any rights on Allah. There's no, Allah doesn't have a duty towards you. You have a duty towards Allah. He's giving you everything, subhanAllah. It will make you feel like no, we do not deserve success in this life or in the hereafter. We don't deserve it. Allah gives it to us with his mercy. With his mercy. But we, we do not deserve it. And the Prophet ﷺ said so. He said, لا يدخل أحدكم الجنة بعمله. None of you will go to paradise as a result of his own work. Which means none of you deserves to go to paradise with this work. And they said, even you, O Prophet of Allah, he said, even me, unless Allah showers me with mercy. And I said before, every one of us has three records. The first two are easy. The first two is the record of good deeds and the record of bad deeds. 
It's not a problem. The good deed is multiplied by 10 at least. And the bad deed is written as a bad deed. The problem is in the third record. If it's opened, we're dead. It is the record of the blessings of Allah. The blessings of Allah. One of us comes with a lot of good deeds. And one blessing of Allah will exhaust it all. So this is the problem. So you need to focus on the, the givings of Allah and to realize it. Ibn Qayyim uh, al-Jawziyyah or Ibn al-Qayyim says, every servant has two types of duties towards Allah. The first type is the duty of abiding by his commands, which means the do's and don'ts. It's your duty to know the do's and don'ts and do uh, the do's and stay away from the don'ts, right? What is the second type of duty? It is to show gratitude for the bounties and blessings of Allah. This is the second duty, which we cannot, none of us can do uh, perfectly. We cannot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ سَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنَةً Do you not see how God has made what is in the heavens and on the earth useful to you and has lavished his blessings on you both outwardly and inwardly? So the issue is how to thank Allah. How can we thank Allah? There are two types of thanking Allah. Two ways to thank Allah. Number one, with the ibadah, with the acts of worship. Allah says, Ya Maryam, uqnuti li rabbiki wasjudi warka'i ma'al raki'een. O Mary, uh, uh, bow down to your Lord and prostrate to him. This is how we can also do. But there is another type of, of saying thank you to Allah, which is by work. So you can say, Alhamdulillah, with, a, with the beads. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Or by praying, or by... But there is also another type of Alhamdulillah, which is by using the ni'mah of Allah, the blessing, by working it in the way he wants. So, when Allah gives you strength... The way to say Alhamdulillah for your strength is by using your strength the way Allah wants. Not against Allah's will. So if you use your strength in uh, wronging people, uh, beating up people, uh, uh, becoming a gangster, this is an unthankfulness. But to be thankful to Allah is to use the strength to help people. Someone is carrying heavy stuff, you carry it with him. You are thanking Allah for your strength like that. You defend the oppressed. You are now using your strength like that. How, wh what is the evidence? Allah says in Surah Sabah, Work family of David as a matter of thankfulness to Allah. So their work is thankfulness in itself. The work itself is thankfulness. Allah gave you knowledge. Teach people. This is how you are thanking Allah for the knowledge. But not you take a beads with a counter and say, Alhamdulillah, 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 10,000 times. No, you use the blessing in the way Allah wants. Okay? And still you can do tasbih, you can do tahmeed, you can do all this. But when Allah gives you a blessing, you need to use it the way Allah wants. Now, the issue is, if our work is not enough, is not enough, why do we do good deeds? And if no matter how many good deeds we do, it will not help us, or it will not we, help us to go to Jannah. It's not enough for us to go to Jannah. Why do we do good deeds? Imagine that you lend uh, 
100,000 pounds to, to, to two people, two different people. Everyone borrowed from you 100,000 pounds and they should return it back after one year. One of them acted extravagantly and he did not return any money until the time was due. And the other one was giving you five pounds every day. So at the end of the year, he gave you 1,800 out of 100,000. It's nothing. But which one of them, if you will forgive, will you forgive? The one who was giving five pounds every day. So it's true that no good deeds are enough, but it, is, it makes you more likely to receive the mercy of Allah than others who don't do good deeds. So we need to do good deeds. We need to fast. We need to pray. We need to help people. We need to do all this to make us more likely to receive the mercy of Allah because we will enter with the mercy of Allah, not with our good deeds. I hope this yani, example was clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in here, in Surah Al-A'raf, إِنَّ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ The mercy of God is close to those who do good. So you do good to receive the mercy of Allah, which will allow you to heaven, not your good deed will allow you. Like a, يعني, there's a rich person who lives in a, a house, and I'm a beggar. If I am a, 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 I'm as a beggar, I don't deserve the money. But if I go, uh, I know that he goes out to go to work at 8, and he comes back from work at 5. So I go, and I keep hanging around, uh, starting 7.30 until 8.30, and then again, in these times, I am more likely to receive something. So I don't really deserve, but I'll be getting. This is the issue. We don't deserve, but we do the good deeds in order to receive the mercy of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Baqarah 218, it's so clear in this verse. In the amanu, wal-ladhina hajaru, wajahadu fi sabili Allahi, ulaika yarjuna rahmat Allahi. Wallahu ghafuru rahim. Those who have believed, immigrated, and striven for God's cause, it is they who can look forward to God's mercy. So they are more likely to receive the mercy of Allah and then go to paradise, not because of their jihad, not because of their hijrah, not because of their belief. Because they are more likely to receive the mercy of Allah. Which means that when you know Allah, the giver, the giver, you will become begging paradise, not demanding it. Some people think, I fasted. I demand to go to paradise. Hey, come on. If you really go to meet Allah on the day of judgment like that with a record of your good deeds, thinking that you want to go to paradise and you're demanding it, you are subjecting yourself for accountability. If you are held accountable, you're dead. Surah al -Haqqa. The man who goes to paradise, he says, Ha umuqra'u kitabiyah. إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَةٍ Hey, look, read my records. هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَةٍ He said, I thought that I will be held accountable, which means he was not held accountable. He was just released. If we are held accountable, we are dead. May Allah shower us with his mercy and allow us to paradise without accountability. We cannot face accountability. How can we? So number one, when you know Allah the giver, you will beg paradise, not demand it. And you will look at your good work as insufficient always. It's insufficient and unreliable. You cannot rely on your good work. But you need to do it all the time. And you cannot downgrade others and feel better than them. Because sometimes we feel like we are better than those people around us who don't pray like us in the mosques. Eh? So we feel like we are better. We are better. 
No one knows the end of us and the end of them. No one knows who will end up praying and who will end up spouting. So don't be proud of yourself. The homework today is to read in your Quran. Okay, we said we read 60 minutes of the Quran with understanding. Okay, and focus on the Qayyumiyya of Allah. The ever watchful. How he takes care of us. How he gives us. How he, he maintains. Okay, focus on this. And we need to fast two days. We already are in Shawwal, and the, Pro, uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said that the one who fasts Ramadan and six days from Shawwal will be counted as if he fasted at Dahr, which means a whole year. Why? Because you multiply by 10. One month multiplied by 10, this is 10 months. Six days multiplied by 10, this is two months. As if you fasted a whole year. So, if you fast, we, I want you to fast this week twice. Secretly. Please, secretly. No one will know. Of course, women, I know that you have to tell your husbands. Okay, but don't tell your friends. Okay? If anyone knows that you are fasting, he will take a cup of water and he will end your fast. Next day, start again. Why? Because you need to learn how to keep it secret between you and Allah. This is a problem, actually. Because someone comes, you offer him a chocolate, he says, thank you very much, I'm fasting. Today is Monday. My family is like that. My father brought up like us. Hey, come on, don't give me a lecture. Halat, you're fasting for me or for Allah? And the Prophet ﷺ said, there is a hadith, hadith Qudsi. كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصوم فهو لي وأنا أجزي به. الله سبحانه وتعالى says every deed that the son of Adam does is for himself, which means he gets credit with it, except صوم, except fasting. It is totally for me, and I am the one who gives credit for it. Which means when you, يعني when you enter the mosque and you stand up in in, in the mosque and you pray. People look at you. MashaAllah, you see this brother? I always come to the mosque and I see him praying. So you get credit from people. But when you're fasting, it's just that your mouth is shut. How can people know that you're fasting? It's something between you and Allah. People will never know except when you disclose this information. So don't. When someone offers you chocolate, take it and say, I'll eat it later. Okay? Or thank you. Why? I can't. But don't say I'm fasting. Two days this week. Fasting secretly. No one will know that you're fasting. If someone knows, end your fast. Start next day. Also, two nights, qiyam. Half an hour. Fifteen minutes. By the way, in the qiyam, you can hold your, your, your Quran. It's on your iPhone or something. You can hold it, by the way, in the Qiyam. Since it's not an obligatory prayer, you can have the Quran in your hand. 10, 15 minutes. And then, secretly. No one should know at home that you did that. Don't send an email or tweet that you had a beautiful night today. Qiyam and this for the sake of Allah. It's not for the sake of Allah. It's for the sake of your followers. For the sake of the people who are on your face, Facebook page. No. For the sake of Allah, remove the rug back. People should not wake up next day to see that the Quran is opened and that your prayer rug is there. MashaAllah, that was, uh, don't do that. Secretly between you and Allah. I know that sometimes we are example for some family members and some friends. Not in this workshop, please. During this workshop, we are now working on our sincerity. We need to learn how to do things for the sake of Allah alone. Alone, inshallah. Alas, so finding al qayyumiya in the Quran during your daily uh, reading of the Quran and two days fasting, two nights making uh, qiyam for minutes, half an hour or something like that. Okay? 
but secretly. Let me tell you how their companion used to do. كان الصحابي يخادع زوجته كما تخادع الأم وليدها. A companion used to wait until his wife sleeps and then he goes out from his room on his toes like a mother who walks after her baby sleeps. You know when a newborn baby who keeps crying all the time, when he sleeps, the mother leaves him and walks on her toes so as not to wake him up so to go and have some rest or cook something or do something. Same thing. A companion used to do the same, which means even his own wife doesn't know what he's doing outside. And I know that there is a hadith of Prophet Muhammad. I know. That says, may Allah bless the one who will wake up his, her, her, his spouse, yani her husband or his wife, even splashing some water in his or her face to pray together, but not every time. We need to learn sincerity. We need to learn how to keep a secret space between us and Allah. We have, we have to have a secret life with Allah. If you do it and taste it, you will not forget it. And it will affect you, inshallah, positively. Jazakumullah.